Mike Cardano with Roto Experts in the Fantasy Sports Network here to talk to you about getting some value in your fantasy football draft. As we start to look at ADP numbers rolling in and where players are being drafted, there are definitely some inequities and inefficiencies to explore. Now, Yesterday, we took a look at prospects of Andy Dalton being able to become more consistent and surpassing his ADP of number 17 in terms of quarterbacks. And today, we're going to look at the likelihood of Cam Newton being able to live up to his lofty ADP at number 6 for quarterbacks, and number 52 overall according to data provided by FantasyPros.com. Now let's first assume that Cam Newton's off-season surgery to tighten ankle ligaments went off without a hitch, and he starts the season at 100%. He's been cleared to start training camp, and while he's admitted that he's not up to speed at the moment, the assumption here is that two months from now, when the season starts, his ankle issues will be a distant memory. Now, if you're one of those who's not willing to make that assumption and feels that his ankle could be problematic, well, taking Newton as the sixth quarterback chosen likely isn't even a consideration. All right, so assuming Cam is healthy, who's he likely going to throw the ball to? Well, Steve Smith has been replaced by Jericho Cotri. Now, you'll notice that Smith had almost 20 more receptions than Cotri did last season, but only put up 143 more yards, which is pretty ironic because Cotri's entire career, he's been more of a possession receiver. Now, Cotri stunned the fantasy football community with his production last season, particularly in the touchdown department, and at 32 years of age, I'm not certain how likely he is to do that again. I think much of his success last season can be attributed to the ability of Ben Roethlisberger to make plays, and while I think he can be a productive player in a PPR format, I would be stunned if Cotri caught another 10 touchdowns this season. Now, Kelvin Benjamin has replaced Brandon LaFell at the number two wide receiver spot for the Panthers, and seeing how the Florida State product has never played in an NFL game, well, I don't know how to realistically handicap this one other than to suggest that he might be able to reproduce what LaFell did last season, which was serviceable, but certainly nothing earth-shattering. Now, anything more than 50 receptions, 750 yards, and 5 or 6 TDs would have to be considered a successful season for Benjamin, I would think, unless I'm really missing something on this one. Now, Tyquan Underwood replaces Ted Ginn Jr. at the third receiver spot, and while Ginn had a pretty decent season last year by his standards, I suspect that the younger Underwood can at least pace his production from last year, as he simply has better receiving skills, with Ginn really being more of an asset in the return game. That said, I can't imagine Underwood having anything more than incremental career success here. Without any real stud receiving options on the outside, I think you're going to see more two tight ends than in the past with Carolina this year. Greg Olson is the stalwart there with 73 receptions for 816 yards and 6 touchdowns last season, and I expect a solid season from him once again. Now, the Panthers will enter camp with a host of other tight ends on the roster competing for spots, including Richie Brock, Brandon Williams, Ed Dixon, Mike McNeil, and DC Jefferson. Now, Dixon is the most accomplished of that group, and I would suspect that he'll be the one that pans out as the second tight end. Now, taking a look at Newton's tendencies at a quarterback, I'll note that 74.8% of Newton's dropback passes last season came out of the shotgun or pistol, which is right around the league average. He faced the Blitz 38% of the time, which was the fourth highest in the league. Now, this occurs mostly because teams know that Newton does not remain fundamentally sound under pressure, as he often just uses athletic skill to deliver the ball. And often, that's a problem. 6.4% of Newton's passes have traveled at least 30 yards in the air, which was fifth highest in the league last year. Now, with the receivers he has to work with, I would be shocked if that held true again this season, as I think his receiving core will have problems getting open down the field. 24.1% of Newton's dropback passes lasted at least 3.6 seconds or more, which was sixth highest in the league. Now, anything more than that for a quarterback usually spells doom, and getting the ball out quick has been an issue for Newton his entire career. Newton only threw to his running backs in non-screen situations 9.7% of the time last season, which was the fourth lowest in the league, and he's going to need to be doing that more to help his counting stats. Finally, Cam left the pocket on 5.9% of his dropbacks, which is just above the league average, so clearly he's not looking to run the ball, and as I suggested earlier, my sense is, is that he runs less with every year that passes anyway. Cam Newton's rushing touchdowns have declined each and every season he's been in the league. He's gone from 14 to 8 to just 6 last season. 
and he's throwing for less yardage with each year that passes. He averaged 253 yards in his rookie campaign, 241 yards in his sophomore season, and just 211 yards last year. And on top of that, he's getting sacked more with every year that passes. He's gone from 35 to 36 to 43 last season. Now, there's no doubt that Cam Newton is an exceptional athlete, and he could be a beast down by the goal line, but the reality is he hasn't progressed as a quarterback in any meaningful way that we can statistically measure in his first three seasons. And based on his ankle and his surrounding cast, I don't see why this season's gonna be any different. Now, I've been one of those who've long maintained that the Panthers will likely pick up a veteran accomplished wideout late in training camp because somebody's gonna get cut because of a salary cap reason. But for all the reasons I've mentioned here, I have a hard time seeing how Cam Newton can pan out as the sixth best fantasy producing quarterback this season, and I would certainly be fading him at his current EVP.